So throughout my entire life as a gamer, one of my all-time favorite things to do is play through some sort of a power fantasy. I mean, dude, few things tickle that primitive gamer brain of mine than ripping apart a pantheon of Greek gods with Kratos, or being able to exterminate an arena full of slobbering demons with the Doom Guy. And you know, just sort of naturally, I think one would assume that few things could fill that power fantasy void better than a good old-fashioned superhero game. I mean, surely, if anything was gonna make you feel like an overpowered force to be reckoned with, it'd be being given the virtual ability of flight, super strength, or laser eyes. And of course, over the years, we've gotten plenty of examples showing that to be true. We've seen some outstanding superhero games in our day. But believe it or not, if you piled up every single superhero game us gamers have ever been graced with, I think you'd be surprised at how few of them were actually great games in comparison to the massive heap of mediocrity that this genre usually falls into. And you know, I find that to be pretty strange. I mean, this superhero genre has done so incredibly well in the cinema space. So why in the world has it failed to obtain a similar foothold here in the gaming industry? Well, in all honesty, Honestly, dude, there is no easy answer to point at, and in reality, I think there's a lot more to it than you'd realize on first glance. So today, let's get down to the bottom of all this, let's break it all down, and let's talk about the problem with superhero games. So first things first, just want to throw this out there for you real quick. I know making a video titled The Problem with Superhero Games basically insinuates I'm saying these games suck. However, in reality, that couldn't be further from the truth, and I really don't feel that way at all. I don't want you to think the whole point behind this video is for me to take a steamy dump all over the superhero game genre. Really what I want to do is to take a different look at these games, to try and decipher and figure out why such a massive gap in quality exists. Like for example, with this new Spider-Man game that just came out, Honestly, dude, it's freaking amazing. Not only is it one of the best superhero games I've ever played, but it's just one of the best open world games I've ever played in general. But yet we have games like Marvel's Avengers from just a few years back, which had more money behind it and arguably more manpower, but yet now it's become an abandoned dumpster fire. So the point is, and the main reason behind this video, why is that the case? Why does such a massive gap in quality exist? And look, there are many arguments one could make, and I've got my own explanations. I have my own theories as to why the genre has found itself in such a weird and awkward state. But before we get down to that, before we really get to the nitty gritty, I think it's best we take a little bit of a step back and start out with a little bit of background, just so we can kind of paint a picture of where we are now and how we got here before we start poking holes into everything, if that makes sense. And I think probably the first thing I should fill you in on and just let you know so you know my biases and where I'm coming from, look man, I'm not the biggest superhero guy out there. Don't get me wrong, I love me some Wolverine, I love me some Batman, some Spider-Man, or some Deadpool, but I'm not the type of guy you're gonna catch at the movie theater watching the newest Marvel release. But while that may be the case, I might not be the biggest DC or Marvel nerd out there, I am quite the geek when it comes to my video games though, and luckily video games and superheroes are something that have sort of gone together since the dawn of time. I mean dude, growing up I came into gaming with what felt like superhero games just falling off the shelf. So while for many kids their introduction to this whole genre was through the comic or TV shows, for me personally though, it was through video games. I remember back when I was like six or seven, my dad added some crazy emulator onto the family computer, and I remember just sitting there for days, staring at this massive list of games, trying to play every single one. And during this period, a lot of the games I stumbled upon were those older classic superhero titles, like X-Men Mutant Apocalypse, that Genesis era Spider-Man game, or the Turtles in Time game. Look, my rambling aside, and the point really is here, video games and superheroes are kind of a match made in heaven, and they've gone together for Forever. And for years upon years, it felt like these games were produced at a pretty big scale. It felt like they were everywhere. And as we grew up, as the years passed, that constant drip of superhero games never slowed down, but the games we did start to get started to change a little bit. There was this very strange time in gaming. I know I've talked about this before in my videos, but essentially between 2005 and 2012-ish was the era of the movie game. This was a weird time period where a lot of the games coming out served to be more of a billboard for the movies. They were like an advertisement in themselves to get you to go watch the movie or at the very least to make a couple extra bucks off the IP. For example, we had stuff like a B-movie game, a Zathura game, an Ant Bully game, or the weirdness that were those classic Harry Potter games. And listen, believe it or not, some of them were actually pretty decent. Maybe it's just the nostalgia talking, but me and my brother played the hell out of that B-movie game when I was little. But overall, with these advertisement-esque games, the point is, while some of them were passable, some of them offered some fun times, the majority of them though, just bluntly, they were a stinky pile of lazily produced shit. And during this advertisement era of the gaming industry, the superhero games were not immune to the problem. And like I said earlier, while some of them were awesome, I mean that old school X-Men Origins Wolverine game was sick when I was growing up. But of course, the majority of the time, that was not the case, and in fact, the games we were getting were pretty despicable. We got stuff like a Fantastic Four game in 2005, then an Iron Man game in 2008, or the Thor game in 2011. And listen, listen, I'm sure someone loves these games. I'm sure someone out there grew up with these games the same way I do with that Wolverine 
Wolverine Origins game. But look, man, we gotta keep it real here. These games were kind of objectively speaking, were not good really at all. But with them serving more as advertisements, like I said, with them being more of those billboards for the movies than actually being good games, it didn't really matter. Their point was never to revolutionize gaming. All they really were was money makers. But eventually a game would come along to shake things up and change that. And on August 25th of 2009, Batman Arkham Asylum was released to the gamers. And I say this with no exaggeration, gaming has never been the same since. Batman Arkham Asylum was a huge massive deal for superhero games, of course, but not only that, it was a massive milestone for the entire gaming industry. I mean, dude, so many of the mechanics and concepts in this game made such a huge splash back in 2009 that you can still feel the ripple effect all the way into today in 2023. I mean, hell dude, it feels like half the games I play with any sort of combat stick to a system very reminiscent of that older Arkham Asylum style. So look, the point is here, man, that after this game, after the release of Arkham Asylum, the bar for superhero games was now set much higher. While in the early 2000s, companies were able to get away with making those lazily produced generic watered down superhero games for what was seemingly just a cash grab. After Arkham Asylum though, those types of games started to become way less frequent. And it just seemed like there was far less room for mediocrity. And I believe that was because us gamers just now knew what was possible and our expectations had never been higher. And while this may just be my recollection, this might not be 100% true. After Arkham Asylum though, it felt like all of the superhero games we got started to become less frequent. And overall, it just seemed like a lot of game developers started to take a little bit more of a step back and really take their time with these superhero titles. And in that post Arkham Asylum era for video games, we got some amazing titles from the follow-up Arkham City in 2011 to the Deadpool game or the first Injustice game both coming out in 2013. The overall thing I'm trying to get across here is because of Arkham Asylum, the bar was now set much higher for superhero games. And because our expectations were set so high, the amount of superhero games we got started to shrink. And in that early 2010s era, although we weren't getting a lot of games, at least the ones we were getting were pretty awesome and memorable. But as the years passed and inching ever so closer into the present day, with more and more superhero games coming out, a weird massive rift started to form. Sure, we'd seen some mediocre titles, we've had some disappointing superhero games, but at about that 2015 mark, a great divide in quality, even bigger than before, started to rear its ugly head. And as I said in the intro, over the last few years and finally leading into today, it feels like every single superhero game we've gotten has either been a work of gaming art or just been a massive disappointment that leaves every fan fuming. I mean, we got the horrible Avengers game, then the criminally underrated Guardians of the Galaxy game. We got Arkham Knight, and then the disgrace that was Gotham Knights. Point is, over the last decade or so, the marks for these games have been all over the place. And so why in the world is superheroes, one of the biggest genres with the most amount of money and manpower behind it, floundering? Well, this is where we really get into the meat and potatoes of the video, the core problems here. Because believe it or not, there is not one answer to point at. It's not so simple. And starting out to this whole dissection of the problem with superhero games, the first real issue I want to dive into is that I don't think this gap of quality just randomly showed up, and in fact, I think it's always been here in some way, shape, or form. But with the progress of video games, with newer technology, and with that ever-rising bar for quality in the industry always going up and up and up, I think the problems that have always existed are now just starting to rise closer to the surface. For example, the biggest and most obvious thing to understand when we're talking about any game that concerns a superhero is a little thing called the Superman problem. I'm sure some of you have heard of this, but for those of you who haven't, the Superman problem essentially states that it's extremely difficult to write a story around a superhero. I mean, how is one to write a story with any sort of progression, triumph, or obstacles to be overcome when your main character is basically a demigod that can overcome any problem thrown their way with ease? I mean, this is a really hard problem to solve for all of superhero media, but with gaming in particular, these problems become exponential very fast, because all of those same core issues that affect the story start to seep into the gameplay and wreak havoc there as well. Because how do you make a game with fun or challenging gameplay when your character should have the ability to wipe the floor with any bad guy that makes the mistake of stepping to them. But if we take that concept and push it just a layer deeper, think about it like this dude, a lot of superheroes flat out just make for horrible video game characters. Take a character like The Flash, I mean it sounds like it'd be a great idea on paper, but how do you conceptualize speed like that on a screen? How do you make a game around The Flash fun? Simply put, you really can't, and the big overall point I'm trying to make here is right from the jump, right from the get-go, these games are severely handicapped. Before anything is even made, developers are already restricted on the characters they can use in the games and the types of games they can make. But of course, there is indeed many ways to combat the Superman problem. I mean, on the first and most obvious level, superheroes have supervillains for a reason. Of course, there's got to be a character of equal stature, equal power, or lethality for there to be any sort of suspense or tension throughout a story. But that only really solves that story side of the problem. In regards to the gameplay, what unfortunately seems to happen are superheroes are stripped of their powers, or their powers at the very least are made less intense. 
intense. And while in turn this does increase the challenge, it will make your game a little bit more playable to a certain extent, but what it really does at the end of the day is leave every fan extremely disappointed. I mean, if you're coming to a Superman game, you want to feel like Superman, not some crappy watered down dollar store knockoff version. Truthfully, given a game around a character like Superman, it'd be almost impossible to find a good happy medium. Thus why the term is coined the Superman problem. But nonetheless, that's why characters like him are often shelved when it comes to video games. And that whole like overarching Superman problem is the main reason the majority of the superhero games we get, at least the ones that I would consider to be truly great games, are made around what I would consider to be lesser heroes, if that makes sense. For example, take Batman, take Spider-Man. Both of them are superheroes in their own right, but they're just kind of normal dudes, if you know what I mean. I mean, Spider-Man actually has superpowers, but there's a big difference between crawling on walls and dropping out of space and laser disintegrating a bunch of dudes with your eyes like you're Superman. But even so, making games around characters with lesser powers doesn't instantly guarantee that it's just gonna be a great game, not by a long shot. Because even while the structure, the concepts, the ideas for the game all may be awesome, everything may be sound. But oftentimes these companies fail because they forget to remember one very important thing. Every character needs to be extremely unique. One of the most crucial and important things with any superhero game's gameplay is it needs to be built and tailored around the character being portrayed. And it needs to be done so in a way where the gameplay revolves around the character and highlights them for what makes them unique to begin with. For example, in a Spider-Man game, you wouldn't give Peter Parker a minivan to traverse across the city. You would instead make an amazing, intricate, and fluid web-slinging mechanic that made every gamer playing the game feel like Spider-Man, obviously. And a great example of failing to make the right gameplay for a specific character is with this new Suicide Squad game that's supposed to be coming up here soon. Do you guys remember when they dropped the Suicide Squad gameplay footage a few months back and everyone started freaking out because of microtransactions, season passes, and in-game currency shit? For me personally, though, I didn't really care about any of that. I mean, being a seasoned gamer in 2023, you're basically yelling at the wall if you're still complaining about microtransactions. Really, the most disappointing thing for me personally was after watching the gameplay, I just felt like none of the characters were that unique. Everyone looked like they kind of played the same. Harley Quinn didn't look like she played how you'd expect her to play. Captain Boomerang's gameplay kind of looked identical to hers. And with a character like King Shark, I was expecting heavy melee combat and eating dudes by the dozen. But instead, no. Every character is just the same floaty, bouncy gun combat, and it all just looks like an upscaled version of Sunset Overdrive. And to me, the thing that's sort of strange about this whole situation is if you took this gameplay and applied it to a game without these already iconic characters, it would look like amazing and fun gameplay. But because this is the style of gameplay that was chosen for a superhero game with already established characters, it just makes it come off like a diluted version of what you'd really want it to be. At least for me, it did. Like I said, none of the gameplay looked bad. None of it looked poorly made on any level. The problems only arose for me personally because it's a Suicide Squad game. So just inherently, it has a name and characters it needs to live up to. And listen, real quick disclaimer, I think this should be obvious, but dude, I'm ragging on a game that is not even out. So please don't take anything I'm saying as a reason to hate on this game. This is a game still in development and they gracefully delayed it even further after this gameplay footage came out to put a little more polish on it. The point is, it's a work in progress of a game, and I'm not just sitting here trying to talk down on the Suicide Squad game. It just so happens to make a really good example for the point I'm trying to make. Regardless though, the overall point I am trying to make is kind of the same one as earlier, it's just from a different angle here. These games are extremely boxed in right from the get-go. There are so many rules to abide by, so many guardrails, and there's just so much to live up to. And because of that, sometimes a superhero game's downfall isn't because it's a bad game. Simply put, it's because it was the wrong game. But look, while that whole identity crisis of an issue can be a hard one to shake, and it can be something that can affect any superhero game. Sometimes though, the problems afflicting this genre are far simpler. Sometimes it's just arrogance or being way too ambitious. And a perfect example of these massive ambitions being to blame for the demise of another superhero game is with the recent Avengers title. Now look, on paper, an Avengers game sounds perfect, and it sounds like it could have the potential to be one of the biggest games of all time. I mean, a game where you get to play as not one superhero, but you get to pick from a list of some of the biggest superhero names ever created, all the while you get to do it playing alongside your buddies online? Who in their right mind would turn that down? That sounds amazing. But however, if anyone had any level of foresight, it would have been clear as day to them that this game was a bad idea and it was either gonna be stuck in development hell for decades or it was gonna be a massive flop. Because there was never gonna be any sort of in-between. There is no parallel universe where the Avengers game was a good game because to make a game like this is almost impossible. Think about it like this. You remember how we were just talking about how important it is to build your game from the ground up around your character? How you have to kind of, you know, tailor and build the gameplay around 
all the core aspects that make that character unique to begin with? Well, take those ideas and concepts and multiply it by six different characters, and I think it becomes fairly obvious why the Avengers was doomed from the get-go. It was gonna be way too much work. I mean, let's do some basic math real quick to drive this point home. If it took Insomniac $100 million to make that first Spider-Man game in 2018, if it took $100 million worth of time and effort for one game around one character, and then the Avengers game had $170 million for a game that had six playable characters at launch, it just wasn't gonna cut it. For the Avengers to have almost twice the budget of the Spider-Man game, yet for it to have pretty much six times the job, I think it's fairly obvious why that was an impossible feat. And truthfully, the big overall problem surrounding the Avengers game was that they just flew way too close to the sun with this one. But you know, nonetheless, that's their own damn fault. They shouldn't have made the game that way. And at the end of the day, if they wanted to make a great superhero ensemble game, they should have gone about it in a completely different way. Because while these games may be challenging to make, they're not impossible. We've had some great ensemble games in the past. Take the recent Guardians of the Galaxy game for an example, because I believe this game succeeds where the Avengers completely and utterly fails. If you took both of these games, the Avengers and the Guardians of the Galaxy game, wrote them out, compared them, they'd sound like relatively similar ideas for games. They're just executed on completely differently. I mean, while both of them are games that revolve around a team of superheroes working together, the Avengers is a multiplayer game where you choose multiple different characters. And the Guardians of the Galaxy game is a single player experience in which you play one character throughout the entire game. So in regards to Guardians of the Galaxy, I'm sure to some people that can come off is underwhelming. I'm sure a lot of people wanted to run around as Rocket the Raccoon. But because this game chose to only focus on one character, it had only one set of gameplay to perfect. Thus, it just had more time to flesh everything out and make it a better game. And although the game restricted itself to one set of gameplay, you're still given a little bit of agency around all the other characters because it allows you to command them throughout the battlefield. So sure, you might not be directly going out of your way to smash everyone to bits with Drax, you might not be button mashing to log a dude in the face with Groot, but you as Star-Lord are commanding them around the whole way through. I know it sounds simple, I know it sounds kind of dumb, but because of that difference in execution, that's what makes Guardians of the Galaxy succeed where the Avengers completely fell on its face. And it's kind of crazy because when you compare these games, Guardians of the Galaxy and the Avengers, without knowing how either one of them played out, I think just sort of naturally everyone would assume the game with multiplayer, the game with more characters, the game with more star power and money behind it would be the more enjoyable, long-lasting experience. But man oh man, that couldn't have been further from the truth, and all because of one simple difference. All because Guardians of the Galaxy just did less. You know, it kind of harkens back to the similar issues we've been talking about over and over in this video. Sure, the Avengers game failed because of those overblown ambitions, but truthfully it failed because those overblown ambitions led to a game where every character felt like a watered-down diluted version of what they should have. But look, dude, let's round this all up, and to get back to where we started, back to that overarching question of why this massive gap in quality exists, or what is the actual problem with superhero games? Well, like we talked about today, there is not simply just one problem to point out. Instead, there seems to be quite a few smaller issues that are infecting the entire genre. Genre. Some of them are simpler issues that have affected all the video games since the dawn of time, you know, just aiming too high, being way too ambitious. Sometimes the issues are just an inherent disconnect between that superhero space as a genre of media and video games as a medium for that media, you know, like with the Superman problem. Sometimes the issue is just a misunderstanding of what makes superhero games so special to begin with, the worlds and the characters. And while of course all of those issues still remain, there is still one massive problem that we need to address us, the gamers, the fans. I think on some micro level, we are to blame for why the genre has found itself in some weird and awkward state. Because you know, it's tough. We all love completely different superheroes and we love the same superheroes for totally different reasons. So at the end of the day, no matter how great the game is, no matter how much polish is on it, you're never gonna make everyone happy. I mean, to make games surrounding characters so near and dear to people's hearts, to make games surrounding a story or franchises people grew up with reading in comic books or watching on TV and still thinking you could live up to those expectations, Dude, that's such an impossible thing to pull off, and that's like a death wish for most gaming studios out there. And that's why I truly do think this genre of superhero games has gotta be one of, if not the hardest genre to make a game in. The bar for greatness in this genre is just inherently set so much higher. And the expectations for these games immediately and naturally shoot into the stratosphere. So high in fact, it's almost impossible to deliver on them. And now with all of those pieces finally put together, that my friends is the problem with superhero games. Anyways, guys, that's the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you clicked on my face, watched all the way through, made it all the way to the outro, 
thank you so much for watching, man. I truly appreciate you more than I can say. Thank you. But of course, what'd you think of the video, man? Did you agree with any of my points? Do you have any points that you think I missed? Or do you think I'm just completely wrong and full of shit and have no idea what I'm talking about? Either way, if we agree or disagree, just regardless, I would love to hear from you because at the end of the day, we're all just passionate gamers and we all got opinions of our own. So drop a comment and let's start a conversation about superhero games. But you know, basic stuff before I get out of here, if you like the video, drop it a like. I'd really appreciate that. You want to see more like this? Subscribe, check out the channel. Got a couple videos. Check them out. Would really appreciate that. If you do, thank you. But anyways, guys, that's the video. One more time. Thank you for watching, man. I really appreciate every single one of you for making it this far. And uh, yeah, peace.